Hey there, I'm Annie Gishiru, racial equity coach for online business owners who are ready to build businesses that are racially equitable so they can be intentionally inclusive. Today's lesson is around how, uh, what avoidance looks like when it comes to doing racial equity work and what you need to do in order to be plugged into the work and not avoiding doing the work. Now, this is something that I have come to learn from my students inside my signature program, Represented. Now, Represented is a 10-week program that teaches online business owners how to build businesses that are racially uh, equitable. They, it, it is an awareness program that walks you through from the very definition of what DEI is, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and takes you right through to what it takes to become a genuine ally and advocate for people of color. And in between, there are just so many eye-opening moments. But what I have come to see from a lot of students who have come through the different cohorts that I have hosted is how they avoid doing the work. Coming into group coaching sessions and talking about uh, what they are noticing within the people around them, sharing stories of, oh, I was um, with dad last night and he said these things and I thought they were really uh, racist and so I called him out on it. And uh, the other day I went to the shops and I noticed a, a shopkeeper did this sort of thing and I, you know, I, I spoke up and I called them out on it. And that is good. And you're probably wondering, well, how is that avoiding racial equity work? How this is avoidance is that you are seeing the mistakes in other people. You begin policing other people. And whilst we do need that kind of advocacy, we do need that kind of, um, you know, allyship. There's a missed opportunity here. There's a missed opportunity for you yourself to do the inner work, to see what is coming up for me. What are the areas that I am also contributing to a system of exclusion? How can I do better? What are practices that personally for me in my life journey and in my business, I need to unlearn? I need to do better. See, that's how the avoidance comes into play. When you look at the mistakes in other people, it's um, often I hear, um, particularly when I, I go to church and listening to a sermon and sitting there and um, the person preaching goes like, uh, you're probably thinking that this message is for somebody else. And you're thinking of the person and you're thinking, I need to tell them to watch this because they need to hear these lessons and these lessons are for them. And in actual fact, the lessons are for you and not necessarily for that other person. They might be, but what are you taking away? And so this becomes uh, a missed opportunity for you, the person who is inside that program where you're learning about racial equity and you start being the educator, the teacher to the people around you and telling them you're doing this wrong or this is you know, not correct. This is what we should be doing. This is what's harmful you're not doing the work. You have avoided the work and you've become the racial equity police around your sphere of influence. And you end up missing the whole point. You end up missing the whole idea. And also I must add the times I have people coming in and sharing or, um, you know, this is what somebody said and I thought that was really wrong and I called them out on it. You're retelling me situations that you're experiencing where they may be, um, you know, really racist, and you're retelling that to me, how do you think that leaves me feeling? And I often, uh, you know, tell my students, when you see something or when you hear something, don't send it to me. Chances are I have already seen it. I have already heard it. So like sliding into DMs and sending, you know, did you see this video? I, this is so um, shocking. Why is this happening in 2023? And in actual fact, it should be an opportunity to really look uh, within yourself and see 
what role has this played in my life? What action am I going to take from here? What conversations am I going to have within my sphere of influence about the things that are coming up for me? Where am I able to articulate my values and the things that are important to me? What difference will I make? And I think most importantly, and one of the most powerful questions I ask my students, particularly when we get to the end of Represented, is how will people know you're inclusive? What work are you doing on a personal level or even on um, uh, a level that isn't personal anymore that lets me know that you're a person who is inclusive? Because there is a lot of work to be done on a private perspective. There's a lot of inner work to be done. But at some point, there needs to be something that allows people to know that you're an inclusive person. You're somebody that I would feel safe in the space. And although we cannot promise safety because safety means different things to different people and we cannot entirely be safe, safe to everyone. But is there something that tells me that this work is important to you? Is there something that signals to people with marginalized identities that you are somebody who values the work of inclusivity, the work of equity, the work of um, making people feel welcome who come from diverse and different backgrounds? And so avoidance, I believe, is one of the tactics that a lot of white um, online business owners are using to not feel the pinch or the pain, the shame, the guilt, the judgment that comes with doing all of this work. And if you've been following me for some time, you will know that I do not believe in shaming I do not believe in, uh, you know, being judgmental to people and making them feel guilty for their belief system. What I truly advocate for and believe is educating and doing so with love, doing so with grace, allowing people to uh, come to this work as they are messy, wobbly, not knowing what they need to know, but allowing them to come as they are, correcting them in love and hoping that they are not repeating the offenses that they're making, that they're learning from their mistakes and doing better. And I think when we meet people where they're at, there is that greater opportunity for them to remain in this work, do this work, and for us to begin to move the needle as far as racial equity work goes within the online coaching space, within the online um, industries that we are a part of as online business owners. And so I would love you to take a moment and think right now, are there times where you have avoided um, racial equity work in the name of doing the work where you have been the one, you know, policing people, uh, reporting back and saying, this is what I saw, this is what happened, but not really doing the inner work. This is what I'd encourage you to do is to take the time and reflect and do some self-interrogation of what are the things that are coming up for you that are causing you to not do that inner personal work, but causing you to look at what others are doing and pointing it out at them. And then this is work that I invite you to join me inside Represented. It is a space that I have created that allows online business owners, women, to come together and do this work, for us to lock arms and do this work together, because I believe it requires a community for us to bring up change and a space where you feel you can come as you are, a judgment-free zone, a zone where you can come, make mistakes, but learn and do better, a place where you're called in. And a call in is um, a call out done with love something that Loretta J. Ross um, speaks often about when it comes to calling in people, correcting them with love. That's the space that represented offers. And for a limited amount of time, I am offering $200 off the price of represented until 30th of June. This is an end of financial year special, and I would love to have you inside represented so that we can do this necessary work together where you're not 
deflecting or looking at other people and how they're getting it wrong and you trying to police them and, and, and trying to correct them, but you are actually beginning the journey of doing that inner work, that difficult but necessary work that you need to work on personally. And I would love the opportunity to journey there with you and to support you and to gently hold you accountable, but firmly take this journey together.